context and data flow diagram request, the eBay marketplace. Now, this is another request from one of my viewers, Ibrahim, who's asked me to look at a type of marketplace type system where people are able to buy and sell products. So we've decided to go with eBay and hopefully this helps uh, you solve what you're looking for. So let's have a quick look at eBay. So eBay is an online marketplace that allows users to search and purchase products as well as sell their own items through an online system. Trade between users can be arranged through postage for global transactions, though users can also refine their purchasing to local traders, which is established through the use of their postcode or zip code data. eBay has been a major player in e-commerce since its rise, with its specific niche being the ability to allow for users to sell their items or having users bid on those items through that kind of auction type practice. The user who bids the highest price by a specific date set by the seller would be the receiver of the specific item. Today we're going to look at eBay and through its marketplace kind of setup within the context of users being able to buy products from one another as well as its e-commerce kind of setup of being able to buy products through its actual system. So let's take a look at this first as a context diagram. So here is our eBay marketplace system. So firstly, we'll look at the user experience as a buyer and essentially they've got to enter their account details in order to access the system. Okay, they enter a search criteria to start looking for products. Okay, and then they make their product selections. After this, they purchase those products they've selected and a payment request is sent to their bank. The bank gives approval and essentially they get a transaction uh, receipt saying these products have been purchased. Here's your receipt as your proof of purchase. So this is pretty standard for any type of e-commerce um, online shopping system. Moving on now, we'll look at it from the context of the seller. And although a user can be both a buyer and a seller, obviously a user is not going to be buying their own product. So we're going to have them, the user is a buyer and a user is a seller, as separate entities here. So as the seller, they enter their account details to access the system as well. Now, if they're going to sell a product, they need to put up the product's information as well as media about the product. So it might be um, an image of the product and videos of the product. And that's to show that the product is real and authentic and show the quality of the product. Okay, and that also need to show, as we said, pick up information. Okay, because if they do want to be a local seller, there might be another arrangement made for how the actual product they're selling is going to be distributed to the person who buys it. Now, when someone does buy their product, their payment information of the buyer, okay, is sent to the seller's bank, okay, and essentially the product is then uh, paid for and it goes straight into the seller's bank account, okay, there's a confirmation of payment from the seller's bank and then that confirmation comes back to the user that is the seller, okay, so that is obviously the selling of the product. Now, what we're going to look at next is if we auction the product, okay, so essentially that is another layer that is a part of eBay's purchasing and selling and that marketplace type seller. So if they do decide to auction the product, that means details such as the auction date, when it's going to be closed at, um, some sort of base pr uh, price to start the product selling at, needs to be entered into the system. From here then, users who want to buy it can then bid on the product. Okay, so we'll see many different users making many different bids and that information is to come back from the system to the seller and they can see what bids are being made on that product. Now, at the end of it, there's going to be an auction outcome and one of the actual uh, buyers is going to be declared winner and the seller is going to see what actual price was the highest for that product. From here then, the payment is then made. Okay, once we've established who the buyer is the highest product, they obviously then purchase the product through their bank account. So I hope we've got a bit of a context and understanding of the overall system. Now let's take a look at a data flow diagram showing us a bit more detail. So we've got the user, they enter in eBay's URL to go to their website, they've got to log into the system and approved. We've seen this many times before with many systems, okay? Once they've logged into the website, they can begin searching products. They enter their search criteria into our um, text box okay and type in what they want to look for when we search items it goes against the actual database okay that eBay has of all their products and then they can view items okay and extract that information and view specific items by clicking on them and we can see the products data now if they like a product they add it to a cart okay and once again very common we looked at it before with Amazon and pretty much any other type of online shopping market products are added to a cart and then the data stored in their cart is obviously tracked to their accounts database so if they leave the website and then come back at a later date they can see the items in their cart 
Now, when the time comes that they do want to actually purchase the items in their cart, so they've gone on a few times, they've looked at many different items, all their favorite items are in the cart, we then click purchase. Okay, so the user clicks purchase, and now we go to the purchasing interface. So the first thing we're going to do is pull all the items from the cart, as well as the user's bank details, so that the purchase can be made. Once they have their bank details, we can access the actual bank of the buyer. Okay, and the item's cost is requested from the bank, and then hopefully a transaction approval returns. Okay, saying, yep, we purchased the items. Okay, this will be recorded in a transaction database, and then obviously, once it's recorded, we need a proof of transaction for the customer, so we need to generate a customer receipt, which is sent to the customer. Okay, and then also receipt data may also be tracked to the actual user's account there. So all of this that we've looked at so far is pretty stock standard for any online shopping system that uses e-commerce. Now we're going to get a bit more into the tweaking of how eBay is slightly different with the marketplace setup. And the first thing we obviously look at is the user is the seller, and essentially they access the system the same way, and then that login to the website would all be the same for them as well. Now, if they're going to obviously um, upload a product, they need to enter the create a product for sale page and then put in things such as the product details, images and video. Now, as I said before, the images and video are important because in order for the authenticity of eBay as a marketplace, they've got to show that the products that they're selling are real. Okay, so there would be some sort of verification process, okay, and where you'd have to show that the product is real. Sometimes it's you holding up a sign next to the product to show that it is really your product. Something to verify that the product is real, and that's done through more so data and media to prove that the product is real. Okay, once it satisfies the criteria of verification, an approval is made, and the product is then verified as real, and then the product uh, page can be recaped created and added to the product database. So now that it's in the product database, okay, it can be searched and looked up for by other users who want to look for that type of product that's being sold. Now, once a person buys the product, obviously, as we mentioned in the context diagram, the buyer's payment information is sent to the seller's bank, okay, and the seller's bank gives us a confirmation that the product is purchased. So there we go with those things in the context diagram for the person selling a product. Now, the final thing we have to look at here is if they decide to auction a product. So if we go back to the create product for sale area in that big blue circle there, here we then make a decision to auction the product. And there we have to enter auction details such as what is the base price and what is the time frame that's going to be online for, for them to actually have the product to be bid on. Now, once the auction details are made, it is entered in against the actual or on the product's details in the product database. So now if I go and alert you to the actual red circle that says view specific information, when buyers view information about this product, they are then going to make a bid on the product, okay? And then the system has to organize the buyer bids. So this would be mapped against the product database. The buyer bid would be entered into the product database. Though in order to organize them, they've also got to retrieve bid data that other bidders, other buyers have made in relation to that product, okay? When the set date comes for the actual auction to end, okay, the highest bidder needs to be retrieved and we display the auction outcome. This person is the highest bidder and then they have the opportunity then to buy that product okay, as the highest bidder. Okay, So they can purchase the product, but then we've also got to let both the buyer and seller know the auction outcome. Okay, and who won it, whether now for the buyer, it might be just telling them you didn't get the product. Okay, but in this case, we're looking at as in that they did get it, they were the highest bidder, and they can purchase the product. And then the user who is the seller can see this is the highest bid, this is how much essentially they're going to be paid for that product. So I hope this has given you a good understanding of how a marketplace system like eBay works, and really the not just how it works at a base level as a, a normal type of online shopping uh, system, but also with the elements of people being able to upload their own products and sell them through the actual system, okay, as well as put them up for auction, which is obviously a staple of what eBay is known for. So I hope this was help helpful to you, Ibrahim, and um, yeah, it really helps you out with what you're working on.